on the day of the 11th, Sunday out of Pentecost, in, in Frederick, Wisconsin. And the epistle for this 11th Sunday out of Pentecost is taken from the first epistle, St. Paul of Corinthians, chapter 15. Brethren, and may God unto you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast after what manner I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which all according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, and after that by the eleven. Then was he seen by more than five hundred brethren at once, of whom many remain until this present, but some are fallen asleep. And after that he was seen by James, and then by all the apostles. And last of all he was seen also by me, as by one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. For by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace Grace in me has not been void. You know the gospel? Taking that in Mark chapter 7. At that time, Jesus, going out of the coasts of Tyre, came by Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the coasts. And they bring him, taking him from the multitude apart. He put his fingers into his ears, and spitting, he touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he groaned and said to him, Epheta, that is, be thou opened. And immediately his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke right. And he charged them that they should tell him. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal did they publish it. And so much the more did they wonder, saying, He hath done all things well. He hath both made both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. So St. Paul tells us in the epistle today that he was born out of due time and not worthy to be called. And then, but the grace of God was not useless in him. God made him great of the apostles and his grace was not made void. Though he started off in an evil way. Every moment uh, condemned This happened in the time of Marcelino, who was pushed and he was old. And then the emperor said, you will have to burn incense before the false gods. And they took the emperor, they took Mar 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 Marcelino, the emperor Maxentius under Diocletian, took, Mar took, took Marcelino before him. And he said, Marcelino, you shall burn incense before the gods, and we are going to be tortured and put to death. And when they showed the torture to Marcelino, he was in his old age. He was timid. And he said, well, maybe if I only use small grains of incense, it won't be such a great sin. And so he took two grains of incense, and he burnt them before the false gods of the emperor. And then the, the emperor was pleased, and the, people, and, and the court of the emperor was very pleased, and the pope himself would burn incense. And when the word came to the faithful, that behold, the Holy Father, the pope himself, he went before the emperor and he burned two grains of incense before the before the false god. And then some of the faithful came up to Marcelino and some of the young priests came to Marcelino and said, Marcelino, you are the head of the church. You are the Holy Father. And look at all the fathers who came before you. Over 200 years of popes from St. Peter until yourself. And they all died rather than burn incense before the false gods. And you, out of fear, burned two grains of incense before the false god. And Marcelino realized how wicked was his sin, and he wept. And then he said, I have done most wickedly, therefore I submit myself to the judgment of the bishops. And he called together the bishops that were in the area about Rome, and he said, I submit myself to your judgment. What are you going to do with me? What should be my punishment? And the bishop said, you are the successor of Peter. You are the follower of St. Peter, and we do not have the right to judge you. Therefore, you must judge your own case, and you must decide your own punishment. Marcelino then judged his case and said, I am not worthy to be called the follower of Peter. 
I am not worthy to be called the Pope, and therefore he resigned. And as soon as he resigned, he said, you must now elect a new Pope, and I am not worthy to be Pope. And so immediately, they re-elected him Pope again. They said, you must be the Pope. You cannot step down. And so he's re-elected Pope. And then he became Pope again. And the word came to the Emperor that Marcelino, who had burned incense before the, before the gods, now was repentant and was re-elected the Pope, and therefore they brought him back before the Emperor. And this time, Marcelino they said, I will not burn incense, and he was tortured, and then he was beheaded. But he knew that he would be put to death. And therefore, Marcelino said, remember, I am the unworthy follower of Peter, and therefore I decree, as my final decree, if anyone tries to preach, because I am an unworthy successor of Peter. And after, after he was put to death by the emperor, in obedience to his command, his body was left laid, laid out exposed in the city of Rome for 35 days. And during those, shortly, a few days after his death, St. Marcel was elected Pope after him. So Marcelino was replaced by Marcel. And Marcel, then after 35 days, and many of those days himself being the Pope, St. Peter appeared to him and said, Marcel, behold, I, Peter, am left unburied. Can you please complete my burial? And he said, but where is your body, Peter? He said, Marcel, Marcelino was my successor, and you have left it. And St. Marcel said, but you do not understand the decree. He said that if I am not buried, if I am not buried, if anyone buries me, they'll be excommunicated. And then St. Peter said, he is my successor. And furthermore, he died for the faith of Christ. The scripture saith, he that exalts himself shall be humbled, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Go and complete the burial. And so St. Marcel then buried Marcelinos. And when the word came to the emperor that Marcel Linos had been buried by St. Marcel and was in a small church in the city of Rome, the emperor came and turned the church into a, into a barn. And he made uh, St. Marcel into, a, into a, uh, <clears throat> a carer of the sheep and cattle, and he surrounded the place and made him live in the barn for the remainder of his days as pope. And he died taking care of sheep in the remainder of days of his papacy until he died from working as an old man taking care of his sheep. But here we consider two things. The difference of our church today and our souls today in our modern world. Weak, and he burned incense before an idol, and he did wickedness before God. He committed the sin of idolatry. And when the sin of idolatry was committed, he worshipped false gods. And therefore, what, would, what did the faithful do? At first they reprimanded him. Marcelino, thou hast done evil. Thou hast thou imitated St. Paul. Remember that when St. Peter had done evil, St. Peter had, had uh, backed down to the Judaizers, and St. Peter allowed the continuing of this practice of circumcision, even though there should be no more circumcision in the New Testament. St. Paul came and said to St. Peter, Peter, thou hast done wrong. You should not be accepting circumcision because the time of circumcision is past. It is now the time of baptism. It is the time of the New Testament. And you don't mix the New Testament with the Old Testament. Testament made a mistake. I have done wrong. And he repented of his mistake. And St. Paul would say by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, I reproved Peter. I corrected Peter. I, St. Paul, a lowly bishop, even though he is a direct apostle from Christ, still just a bishop. He reproved the head of the church who was made the head of the church by Christ himself because he had done wrong. I resisted him to the face because he had done wrong. And St. Peter repented, and St. Peter retracted. Then Saint, and and St. Peter then did the right thing. And we see the case of Marcelino. Marcelino had burned incense of false gods. He was the first a, a pope to actually bow down before the enemies of God. And yet he still became a saint because he repented of his sin. But nonetheless, he was going to back down. And what did the people say? Marcelino... You have done wrong, particularly against the faith. It has been the practice of St. Evil of Chart stood up against St. Pa Pascal II, who did not become a saint. Pascal II did not die a holy pope. But Pascal II did back down when St. Evil of Chart stood up against him and said, You are teaching wrong. 
You are accepting the error and the heresy of the Caesarol papism. The, 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 the government has some authority over the church when it does real church. You must back down from your heresy. And so see if Pascal II did, because it was corrected by St. Evo of Sharp. And so, that, and then throughout the history of the church, whenever there is a, a, a public sin against the faith, then the inferior can stand up even against the Pope himself. But what do we do with that Holy Father? One of the great evils of St. Vicandism, the problem of our times, is they say, well, the Pope is so wicked, the Pope is so bad, whether it be Paul VI when he became Pope, or now to the Supreme so wicked, he is so bad, he cannot be the Holy Father. We reject him, he is not our Father. And yet we have seen Pope Pascal, Pascal II, who never became a saint, Honorius, who died a wicked death. And yet, and yet these men were all accepted by popes and by the saints, and they were never rejected their papacy. They reproved them for their sins against the faith. They were reproved for their mistakes. And then they were given the opportunity to repent. The famous repentance of John the 22nd. Pope John the 22nd taught heresy. Happy because they did not have their bodies. And so other elements related to that doctrine, which are heresies of the church. And what did they do? The people attacked. They attacked the city of Avignon. Avignon at that time, not in Rome. Attacked the city of Avignon, would not absolve him of his sins, and then he repented and recanted his sin before he died. And, and the next Pope, Benedict, the, the, one of the Benedicts, Benedict the, the, the fourth or fifth, whatever number it was, <laughs> made a dogma of the church against the heresy of John the 22nd. The souls in heaven are perfectly happy, and that John the 22nd had done wrong, but John the 22nd repented. But in all these times of history, John the 22nd repented. Honorius did not repent. Pascal II did not repent. St. Marcellino did repent of the actual sin of idolatry. The Pope does that which is wicked, starting with St. Peter, and any other Pope until the end of time. Our presently, we have Pope Francis. If the Pope speaks heresy, if the Pope, the Pope does great evil, if the Pope goes so far as to burn incense before an idolatry, before a statue, what St. Marcellino did, Francis did just a few months ago, when he worshipped in front of the, the Pachamama, Pachamama inside of the city of Rome. He took the idol of a pagan and he prayed with the idol and he worshipped with the idol. And in this he imitated St. Marcelino. What is the duty of the, the priest and bishop and the faithful of the church? To correct. And St. Marcelino, not only did the priest correct him, but the faithful also corrected him. And said, Marcelino, thou art the Holy Father, and you burn incense before the false gods. Oh, with so many of your ancestors, starting with St. Peter, was crucified upside down. And so many saints. And yet you all of a sudden are not following the tradition of your ancestors. You're not following the tradition of the Holy Fathers that came before you. And Marcelino wept and repented, even so far as to resign. But his resignation was not accepted. They said, you must be re-elected him Pope Emperor. I'm the same emperor, he was martyred. And then St. Peter said, do not follow the decree of Marcelino, of Peter. And St. Marcel was instructed by St. Peter himself, bury me, complete the burial. What is the spirit of the church? We have wicked Pope who is not teaching the true faith. He is leading souls away from God. What are we to do? Reprove and accept him as our Holy Father. And the time will come when he must return back to God. As St. Marcelino did, St. Marcelino turned against God, but then St. Marcelino came back to God. And St. Marcelino obeyed heaven. And similarly, our president consecrated Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. She said that in 1929. Almost 100 years have passed, and no pope has obeyed her. Every pope from Pius XI until the present accepted Fatima as true. They accepted the request of Our Lady of Fatima, but they have not obeyed her request. In this they have disobeyed heaven. But the time will come when a Pope will finally obey heaven. What are we to do between now and then? Follow the spirit of the church. If we find the Pope going against God in a public manner, against the faith, leading souls away from God, then we are to reprove and correct him, as St. Paul did 2,000 years ago. As the faithful did in the 200s, and right around the year 300 when Marcelino was a pope, as the Saint Evo Sharp did before Pascal II, 
And as the Dominicans and Franciscans did against John the Twenty Second, and as Archbishop Lefebvre did against the modern popes of Paul the Sixth and uh, all the way up until John Paul the Second, and we continue to correct the popes when they are going against faith, but we do not judge them. As the bishops wisely said to St. Marcelino, Marcelino, we appreciate your humility, that you're ready to accept us to judge you, but we are only bishops. You are the bishop of Rome. You are the successor of Peter, and we have no authority to judge you. We have no power to judge you. Therefore, you must judge your own case, and you must decide your own punishment for the great sin of idolatry. One of the many, many proofs throughout the history of our church that from the very, very beginning, from the time of St. Peter, all Catholics recognize that the Bishop of Rome holds a special place in the church that no other bishop has. He has the same power as any bishop as far as the power of orders go, but he has jurisdiction, he has authority, he has command over all souls, and he sits in the chair of St. Peter, and no one can judge him. No one can judge him. The first sea is judged by no one. And from the very beginning of time, St. John the Apostle, what did he do? He wrote to Clement, who had not met Jesus. He had never met Jesus Christ. And not only had St. John uh, met Jesus Christ, he was the beloved apostle. And what did the beloved apostle do? He wrote to St. Clement of Rome. And he said, Clement, thou wish to my people of Ephesus and tell them to straighten up and to listen to me because they will listen to you because you are the Holy Father. That's what St. John the Apostle in his old age wrote to the much younger professor of St. Peter. And he was still alive, but St. John was still alive when that fourth pope was there. And St. John submitted to the fourth pope. He did not submit only to Peter. He submitted also to Linus. He submitted also to Anacletus. And he submitted to Clement. And Clement was the Pope when St. John died. And that the Pope cannot be judged by anyone, even if he commits a sin of idolatry. We can correct him and say, Thou hast done wrong by committing the sin of idolatry, such as John Paul II did when he worshipped with multiple pagans many times throughout his papacy, such as Pope Benedict did. And, and, and in his papacy also, with the pagan worship of the Assisi meetings, repeating John Paul II's meetings, and such as Pope Francis also has done, they have committed the sin of idolatry. And in this sin of idolatry, worshiping with pagans, they are in fact imitating St. Marcelino. And Marcelino repented. Marcelino did not lose his papacy. Marcelino was corrected. And Marcelino went back and became a martyr and a saint. And so it is possible for Francis, who is presently working against God, who is presently acting as the enemy of God, to repent. And a few days ago, now only been a bishop for 16 days or 17 days, when I was vowed an oath, Uramento, a swearing. And this oath is that I accept Francis as the Holy Father. And whoever is the enemy of Francis is the enemy of me. And whoever attacks Francis attacks me. And I accept him as my Lord and the head of this holy church. And I accept him and all of his successors. And if he calls me to come to Rome for a synod or a gathering, I will go to Rome for a synod and a gathering. And how will I show my fidelity to Francis? I will show it by things. Persequar, it says in Latin. And impugnabo. I will show it by persecuting and by fighting. I will persecute all heretics all schismatics and rebels against the Holy Church, and I will fight them, and that they, and, and, and I will, 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 will do in, in, as my ancestors have done. So that in the past, the bishop, St. Paul, what did he do? He corrected St. Peter to the face, but he did not take St. Peter's place. St. Peter remained St. Peter. And what did Evil Sharp do? He corrected Pascal II, but he did not take the place of blessed of Pascal II, who was not blessed. And the same of Honorius and all the other popes that have decided to go against the law of God, particularly against the faith. Therefore, we must recognize in the example of St. Marcelino that he was a weak pope who had all saints before him. He burned incense before the idol, which he should never have done. But then he repented of his sin, and his successors, whether it be Francis himself before he dies, or his successor, 
will repent of the sins against the faith of Vatican II, the sins against the faith of not obeying the Blessed Virgin Mary's request that came from heaven at Fatima, the sins against the faith of mixing with the false religions and diminishing our true religion, and they will repent as our ancestors have, their ancestors have done, and then they will obey heaven. Because the Blessed Virgin Mary did say, the Holy Father will one day consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The Holy Father will do this, but it will be late. We're now 90 years, 91 years late. 91 years ago, it was when the Blessed Virgin Mary said, 29, we in Spain. Today is a day when the Pope must some years have passed, but it shall happen. The Blessed Virgin Mary's prophecy will be fulfilled, and the, and the Pope will one day repent for the sin of himself and the sin of all his predecessors from the Pius XI, 1929, until today, he will consecrate Russia to the Magna Heart of Mary. And no one can take the place of the Holy Father in doing that. But we can imitate the faithful who chastised St. Marcelino. They can also imitate the faithful who did not allow him to, re to resign. One of the great sins of Benedict XVI, who is now no longer Benedict XVI, but Cardinal Ratzinger, one of his great sins was his resignation. He should not have resigned. When Marcelino resigned, they told him, no, you may have sinned, repent of your sin, but you do not resign. The Holy Father is made the Holy Father. He is the Holy Father until he dies, and he should not resign. But, 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 the, but the Benedict XVI did put Pope Francis in, in order to make it appear as though there's two popes. That's why Cardinal Ratzinger did what he did, and he must repent of that before he dies. And if he does not repent of it, he shall not save his soul. And he is now near death. Francis has taken his place. Francis is the Holy Father. And Francis is the one who must fulfill the request of Our Lady of Fatima. And that time will come. Meanwhile, we must be firm in our holy faith, follow the example of our ancestors, and recognize, as, as, as Solomon said, there is nothing new. The first pope to be scared and bow down to the world. Liberius did it. Marcelino did it. Even though he would repent and become a saint. Honorius did it, Pascal II did it, John XXII did it, and many others similar sins in the history of our papacy. And yet the papacy continues to be holy, the Pope continues to be the successor of St. Peter, and the victory of St. Peter, it will come, it will come, and it must come. In any case, it persevere in holy faith, and follow the example of our ancestors, and not any new ways or any great modern novelties such as the new novelty that there is no Pope because he has sinned against the faith. And that we repay, wait for them to repent and come back to God. I pray you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.